Hi, and welcome to Sparkle Tart. It's Kate Palmer here, and I'm back with another project for the Lulu Art Design Team. Except today, the project is in two parts. And we're going to start by creating a fabulous textured mixed media background. Now, the first thing you'll need to do is gather a few beautiful vintage elements. Now, I have a few from Tim Holtz. So I have the Eclectic Elements Material Swatches or Squares. And I have the Tim Holtz uh, Thrift Shop Pack of Ephemera. I also have some beautiful vintage book papers from Lulu Arts and a piece of scrap paper just cut to card front size. Now the first thing I'm going to need to do is glue my piece of scrap paper to my background. Now the text doesn't quite cover the full length of the card so I'm going to have to cut and swap and change this a little. I'm going to use Liquitex Matte Medium to glue this onto the card. Now I'm just going to add a layer of matte medium over the entire front of my card just to give it a little bit of strength because the vintage papers are about to take a beating and leave this to dry. Once dry, just trim off any excess. Now that we have our vintage paper background created, I'm going to use two Neocolor 2 crayons and these are water soluble just to add a little color. So I have gold and ochre. Now there's something kind of fun and childlike about playing with crayons. I haven't learnt not to love them yet. So I'm just randomly adding both of those colors into the background. I'm going to give it a spritz of water just to activate the neo colors and you can see they're already bleeding by themselves but I'm also going to grab a stiff brush and just work those two colors into the background. If any of the areas aren't blending well enough just add a little bit more water. Now if that's not dark enough add a little bit more of the ochre and that's the first layer of color for our background done. Now it's time to add a little texture. So I have some Liquitex light molding paste and one of the new Dilutions stencils, Old School Alpha. Now this stencil is actually pretty good because it's got small areas of text and larger ones. So you can almost choose the look that you're after and then just lift that off. So at this point, I now have molding paste down one side and across the middle, sort of working its way into the corner. Now I need to let this dry before I go any further and I also need to make sure I've just run a finger down the edges just to make sure there's no uh, rough bits of molding paste poking off my design and I need to go and wash my stencil. Now that the texture paste is dry it's time to add the next few layers. Now these are all uh, pieces of fabric and elements from the ephemera pack as well as a, a couple of small paper scraps and all I'm going to do is trim these to size and layer them over the background just to make it a little bit more interesting. Now so that all of the layers aren't exactly the same I'm going to distress some of them You can do this with scissors if you don't have a distressing tool. You could sandpaper some of it. You could make some of it wrinkly. You could tear some. Basically, you're just trying to give it a little bit of texture. I've cut some of the fabric from the Tim Holtz fabric pack. And I'm just going to pull some of the threads from the ends. Just so it looks a little bit ratty. So I'm just going to grab the Liquitex Matte Gel again and I'll glue these down as I go. And it might seem a little strange but I'm also going to add these little fibery bits just for a little bit of extra interest. Now make sure all of your bits are stuck down and I'm again going to add another layer of the matte medium. Now that this layer is dry I'm going to add a little Liquitex ink and this one is transparent raw umber just to darken things up a little. Now the majority of this background will end up being covered by the time I'm finished. So basically everything I'm doing here is just to add interest and texture onto the background. Now I'm just wetting my brush here so I can drag that ink around. I'll make some darker and some lighter. I really want to tone down that material so I might add a little bit extra 
onto that. And I love how it's picking out that texture paste or the molding paste that I added in the background. Now you don't have to spread this around. If you like spots, you can just leave it dry in the sort of little puddles that you created. But I like moving it around a bit. Now I might leave that a little bit stronger. And I might even add a few drips, just, just for something a little bit different. Now if any of those drips are too strong, you can add a little water and make it spread and it'll dry as sort of a little ink mark. And if you'd like those to move or run, just move your cardstock. You get some really interesting drip effects. And then a hint of distress stain. At this point we've added some texture and some layers of colour to the background. Now it's time to sort of turn it all down. So I'm going to use a very dry brush and add a tiny, tiny little bit of gesso over the top just sort of barely scraping the surface. You'll find that not only does this help bring the colors together, but it actually ends up highlighting some of the texture and it gives you a really good base for the layers we're about to add next. The gesso helps unify the background and make it sort of look almost more vintage than just the color by itself. It also does a fantastic job at picking up every little bit of texture and highlighting it. So this will be the base for our vintage mixed media card. If this doesn't have enough pattern on there for you, try using one of the new Distress Oxides from Ranger. I've got Walnut Stain and a little piece of Punchinella. I'm going to use this as a stencil and add the most fantastically gorgeous little spots all over the background. Now, the wonderful thing is because you're using a Distress Oxide, on top of a painted or coated background. It's going to move a lot when you add water to the point where if you don't like it, you can almost erase it completely. But I love all those little spots. They look so cute. Add some stamped images to your background if you'd like to. I'm using a found object and jet black archival ink. And our textured background for our mixed media project is now complete. Several layers, lots of interest, lots of colour. Can't wait to show you what I do with it next. Now don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you can see more new projects as soon as they're released. Bye!